Facebook made its debut as a publicly traded company today, but investors did not like the stock as much as many had expected. Traders also reported some technical problems with orders to buy and sell the stock. Still, it was a big day as the initial public, public offering became the third largest on record. The widely anticipated stock offering finally got underway when Facebook creator Mark Zuckerberg rang the NASDAQ opening bell from his company headquarters in Menlo Park, California. In the past eight years, all of you out there have built the largest community in the history of the world. You've done amazing things that we never would have dreamed of. And I can't wait to see what you guys all do going forward. Shares in the social networking giant opened at $38. And in the first 30 seconds of trading alone, 82 million shares traded hands. But after hitting a high of $45, the stock ended up gaining just 23 cents over its opening price. That meant the company raised more than $16 billion from the IPO. It's Facebook, 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 Facebook. The event was heavily hyped for days, and today it generated buzz on the street and on the air. This is expected to be huge. This is, it, IPO has hit the mainstream, as Kramer had yes. mentioned, with kids even wanting to put in orders, and you can see that excitement here in Times Square. All this was a far cry from 2004, when Facebook was born in Zuckerberg's college dorm room at Harvard. People want to go on the internet and check out their friends, so why not build a website that offers that friends? Zuckerberg's story and the site's explosive growth was dramatized in the 2010 Oscar-winning film The Social Network. Two years later, the company has 900 million users worldwide and counting. After today, it's now valued at more than $100 billion, and Zuckerberg still will control about 60 percent of the voting shares. But he insisted today that going public will not change Facebook at its core. Right now, this all seems like a big deal. Going public is an important milestone in our history. But here's the thing. Our mission isn't to be a public company. Our mission is to make the world more open and connected. Still, as Facebook enters the next phase of its life, some are asking if it can live up to the value the market put on it today. About 80 percent of its revenue currently comes from advertising. Yet just this week, General Motors canceled its $10 million ad budget for the site. The automaker said the ads weren't selling cars. Facebook also faces the challenge of adapting its advertising model to the growing mobile device market. For a closer look at all this, we turn to two people who've been tracking the company and today's developments. Arvind Bhatia is managing director and an equity analyst with Cern AG Financial Services, a brokerage firm. And Rob Cox is U.S. editor of Reuters Breaking Views, a financial news website. Welcome, gentlemen, to you both. Rob Cox, beginning with you. So what did you make of today's IPO? I mean, did it fail to live up to the hype? Uh, you know, it was the best and the worst of American capitalism writ large. I mean, you had a hundred billion dollar company go public at which no, none of the people who went public with it today actually made any money. Now, if you bought the stock, uh, you didn't make any money, right? But a hundred billion dollars of value was created. It had all of the hype. It had all of the sort of excitement that we have in capitalism. And remember, it's a, an incredible creation, uh, you know, 900 million people connected around the world. It's brought joy, tears, laughter, annoyances, all those things. <laughs> But at the same time, uh, it was the sort of ultimate deal of the 0.1 percent, the thousand or so people who got in before it went public and was, had a $100 billion valuation. It's extraordinary. Arvind Bhatia, what would you add to that? The best and the worst? Do you think it's a disappointment to the uh, investors? Well, clearly, I think uh, people were expecting a bigger increase in the stock price uh, after the first day. Normally, in things like this, uh, Investors expect a 10, 15 percent increase uh, day one. So that didn't happen. But I want to put that in context a little bit. Uh, keep in mind that over the last few weeks, uh, the underwriters, which are the people who brought, the, you know, helped the company uh, come public, uh, they were raising the price, uh, the offering price of this deal. So that also caused some of the upside that we would have expected today uh, to kind of go away. But uh, I agree with Rob. Overall, uh, I would still consider this as a big success for an eight-year-old company. Uh, started uh, in uh, in one person's dorm, 
uh, again, a symbol of American capitalism, no doubt. And so, Rob Cox, as you said, this is more than $100 billion. Do Facebook's revenues, I think that's something like 100 times last year's earnings, do Facebook's potential revenues justify that value? Uh, well, look, every, nobody can take numbers. And uh, I mean, you, there are tons of analysts that have come out and sort of reverse engineered uh, an argument for supporting the stock. So you can say, oh, we know it's $100 billion. Let's figure out a way to actually make a bull case for this. Let's look at the numbers. We can say it's going to be a slice of the advertising market and therefore it'll look like this. Uh, it should have the kind of information that people will pay a ton of money for. It can be like a credit rating agency. There's a million ways to kind of try to come up with a number, a numerical valuation for this company. But at the end of the day, what people are betting on is that 28-year-old hoodie-clad kid, Mark Zuckerberg, coming up with a way to take the 900 million people that he's got connected and all of the information that they've willingly given to him and find a way to make it, make it work. And I think there's just, it's, it's a lot of people are talking about faith book, right? I mean, there's faith in Mark Zuckerberg's ability to do that. And I think that's really the only way that people can justify paying 38 to $45 a share or anything for the next couple of years for this stock. So, Ar Arvind Bhatia, so this is really predicated on faith in the future. It is, but I think there is history behind this. Uh, you know, eight years ago, when Facebook uh, was just starting, uh, you had a company called Google Go Public. Uh, and at that point, they were disrupting the, uh, the billions of dollars of advertising market. Uh, currently, that's a $600 billion market, by the way. And they did that with search. And today, that's happening with social. So I think people have something to look at uh, as, uh, as, as history and point to where things can go. Clearly, what uh, Rob is saying uh, you know, about the number of people there on Facebook today, 900 million people, that we think will be a billion and a half people. And that uh, excludes China, where uh, there is another half a billion people on the internet today. You could assume some percentage of that people would come on Facebook if they're able to uh, get in that country. And so, the and so and go ahead. But so, what are Facebook's challenges in trying to to live up to that? In other words, what do they have to do that they haven't done now? Well, the biggest task, uh, uh, they, I think, they have to first continue to make sure that the user experience, uh, you know, is is really strong. People. Uh, want to come back and get value. They want to spend 15, 20 minutes a day. Uh, that they have to continue. Then from there on, uh, and the, the number one task there uh, for Mark Zuckerberg is to keep that audience. Then Sheryl Sandberg, the, the chief operating officer, her job is to convert uh, that audience uh, into money. And the way they would do that is to continue to uh, target uh, uh, the ads that advertisers put on Facebook uh, in a very meaningful way that, uh, you know, the returns that advertisers get uh, uh, become uh, bigger and bigger. So um, those are two things they have to do uh, in the near and longer term. So, Rob Cox, back to you on the advertising. First of all, you had GM pull its advertising, but advertising budget, upcoming one. What are the challenges for Facebook to, to grow this advertising and, and also on the mobile devices? Yeah, I mean, I think those are the two the big questions. And clearly, uh, certainly the mobile advertising issue was one that Facebook itself highlighted in the prospectus for the IPO as a potential risk factor. But I mean, looking at GM's decision or to come out public and say that it was reducing its Facebook advertising is quite interesting because it tells you that they don't feel that they're getting a satisfactory experience or results from that advertising, which means, to Arvin's point, that they need to go back uh, Facebook and Sheryl Sandberg and they need to figure out, well, what can we do with the user experience to make it more effective? And that's a very delicate balance because, as we all remember, with MySpace, or a few people might remember actually with MySpace, was the more intrusive the experience is, the less good the experience will be for the users and they'll walk away. So it's quite a difficult balance. And at the same time, we're just talking, that's just really about the computer experience. You know, when we talk about things like mobile, it's a whole different game. And, you know, we are all moving much, much more aggressively than I think anyone would have thought a couple of years ago into using mobile uh, devices to access Facebook and all other manner of uh, websites and information. And there's no clear way to make and monetize that experience uh, for advertisers. So these are, you know, twofold pincer movement that, that Facebook's going to have to face. And Arvin, can you explain briefly, though, why is the Facebook model hard to apply to a mobile, a handheld mobile? Well, think of it as, you know, the real estate on a mobile phone is very limited. 
So the opportunity to show a lot of ads, uh, therefore, is limited. But at the same time, I think uh, what we are forgetting is that uh, mobile is another way that we are accessing uh, Facebook or other uh, websites. What Facebook's goal is to keep uh, their website uh, sticky. In other words, they want you to keep coming back, uh, whichever way you want to access it. So uh, I think that people will, will supplement their use of uh, Facebook uh, through mobile. It's not going to be either or. And uh, as long as that, that is happening, uh, over time, uh, I think Facebook and other companies will find uh, a better and better way to show us ads that are relevant. Uh, they just started doing that in March. So uh, the revenue they're getting from uh, mo uh, mobile is, today is zero. And so I would look at that as, uh, yes, a near-term risk in terms of the transition, but long-term, a huge opportunity that's untapped. Uh, about half a billion people are accessing Facebook through their uh, mobile uh, phones, mm -hmm. and mobile phones are getting smarter. So that's how they will uh, get better at it over time. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Arvind Bhatia and Rob Cox, thanks both. Thank you. Thank you.